Yes, my name is Doina Onchel, and I am the founder of Hervolution, a nonprofit organization based in Toronto, Canada. I um, okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Hervolution and why I started it. I actually came. My background is uh, my cultural background. I'm from Romania. I came here here a long time ago. Uh, I came to Canada, and I have had a, a whole bunch of I would say barriers of my own in entry to the Canadian experience. I've, um, you know, I've wanted to be an engineer, I think, when I was much younger, but I didn't have those opportunities for me to enter, to enter this education. Uh, with that said, I started in, um, my passion has always also been about providing opportunities for women to make sure that they have, you know, access to proper careers, proper education. And with that said, um, I learn about technology and women in STEM or the lack of women in STEM um, kind of by accident when I started an organization or company of my own um, to provide digital marketing um, services to professionals and going to a lot of conferences, going to a lot of events and a lot of workshops is where I saw the, the numbers of women in the room were very, very low. Um, but also the conversation that was happening in the room was more about, um, um, you know, if women want to get in STEM, nobody's really stopping them. So that particular sentence right there is what motivated me to create an organization where everyone has access to um, technology, to education in technology. Um, so I started Revolution uh, eight years ago. Uh, by accident, it was on Valentine's Day. I guess it was all love. Uh, so I started the organization and the focus of this organization is to give access to young women that generally do not have access. Um, and what do I mean by that is women that are low income, uh, young women that are new to Canada or young women that do not necessarily have the role models or someone to inspire them to get into STEM. Um, uh, I also would like to make clear that I work with young girls, like young women or girls that are in high school. And the reason why I decided to work with girls of that age is because I feel that uh, typically a young woman, when she turns around 12 years old, is when she gets to make a whole bunch of decisions for, you know, as to what she should get into, what is accepted by the society or, you know, also deciding on career choices. And so I decided to work with girls that are as young as 13, even though we make room for girls that are even 11 sometimes because they have such passion for technology and to learn and get involved that we don't want, we don't want to stop them. We want to make sure that they have that access. So, uh, with that said, we want to start a revolution. We tried a whole bunch of programs and smaller workshops and, uh, um, it was very welcoming. And I saw that young women really wanted access to to this technology um i mean to technology learning what i would hear a lot of the times saying well if you work with girls that um are low income or they are you know they come they come from let's say a welfare i'm not sure if everybody understands what a welfare system is where you go and collect money because you cannot afford to pay for you know your living expenses so you get the government to help you you know a lot of these young women are you know under the circumstances not necessarily by choice and so a lot of the comments i would hear say people are not um are not um they may not be interested. The reason why they don't go into this learning is because they don't really want to. And I decided to prove them wrong because, you know, there is a lot of, there was a lot of interest. There was a lot of young women that, you know, want to get into the learning. So our program welcomed them. And uh, not only that we welcomed them, but we got to listen to them. We got to listen to what they want and what they need from here. Um, they, the uh, program that we started with in seven years ago called the Ghost STEM program was very basic. Um, it's the um, just a four days program where they get to learn basic HTML and CSS coding 
just uh, um, basically learn how to build a one-page website. Um, after three years when we started that program, the well, actually, during the first three years of that program is when we heard the girls come back and say, I actually am very interested in getting into STEM. I'm interested in learning more about technology, what other opportunities are out there, except I'm not sure where to go. I did some research and I couldn't find much opportunities. Well, there were some. However, they were very expensive and they're not accessible, again, to these young women that are bright brilliant and very very um um uh, like very excited to get into stem you know so when i saw that there isn't much available i decided to create another program where I actually gives them an extensive um learning opportunities about technology computer science in particular uh the program is called stem enough and it's um it's about a month long program and uh, provides the girls with learning around, you know, solving a challenge, a real world problem. We provide them with, uh, typically during the normal circumstances, we're not talking about pandemic where everything is virtual, but typically we will bring a business and uh, a real business. We identify a woman that business and she comes in and she says about certain challenges that she has in her business. And the girls have to solve that with the understanding of technology. Um, they learn Python and they learn JavaScript. With that, um, you know, um, young women get to learn um, whew, so much. Not only that they get to solve those problems, but they get to learn, like I said, Python and JavaScript. And, um, you know, we also work with partners that come with different um, experiences. And what I mean by that, we've had in the past, we've had partners that came with um, AI. So the girls got to learn about AI in e-commerce, AI in automotive industry. They got to learn about cybersecurity, which was really interesting because, I mean, just because you learn, you know, how to code is very important for them to understand how that can apply to a future career. So we're very excited that this year we're actually going to have uh, quantum computing for the first time in eight years that we've run her revolution. We have uh, quantum computing. Uh, that's going to be something that the girls are going to be introduced to. Um, whew, what else I can say? Um, I can say that um, when we create when we create this uh, programs for the girls, uh, for the most part, the reason why I do it is because, as I mentioned earlier, the girls are interested and they want to learn. And our data shows that. Uh, our data shows that young women get into very prestigious um, post-secondary institutions. Uh, for example, um, and here in Toronto, Canada, or in Ontario, we have girls that go into Carleton University that is based out of Ottawa. We have uh, University of Toronto. We have Ryerson University. We have um, York University. And they get into certain different various things, such as in Waterloo as well. Yes, we have some girls that went, go to Waterloo. And they, um, they get to go into computer science, mathematics, physics, um, business and technology, um, which makes me very proud. And again, I, when I started this uh, talk, I mentioned how I wanted to uh, prove people wrong, that young women that don't generally have those opportunities, for the most part, it's not by choice. So it doesn't mean that there isn't any interest, but they come and they learn, you know, and they go forward and, and they, um, and they, they obtain an education and they start careers in technology after our program. So um, I'm very proud of them. And as one of the young women has mentioned the other day, that the reason why she dares to dream is because we dare to break barriers. And that makes me so proud when I hear that. Um, and it's very exciting for me to see, to see that the girls get to um, find this exciting for them as well. Um, Another thing I was going to mention that we do at Revolution, because I think that when you learn the skills is one thing. Uh, when you learn um, 
you know, how to code or you learn about business and you learn about AI or you learn about cybersecurity and quantum computing. It's all great. And I think it's very important work. However, there's, uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of systemic issues that are uh, uh, present at the moment and the reason why um, why um, women don't get into technology, which are, I feel like they need some more confidence. And with that, you know, we bring a lot of the young women that come into our programs to come back and learn learn leadership skills. They sit on committees. They come and we help them understand how can they make decisions and how can they use their voice. Um, and also, which I'm very excited about, we creating opportunities for them to sit at the board, which means young women become voting members for our organization. And not only do they come and say, this is what's happening in my world, but also this is, you know, this is how I want that to change. And we make them, we bring them to be part of that conversation. So when we speak diversity and inclusion, we focus a lot on including the young women at the table. Um, I see some questions here on the chat. Um, so, Doina, are you seeing increasing interest from girls every year, or has it been about the same since you started? No. Our program started with five girls in the first year, and now we have a wait list. Uh, we, um, the Ghost STEM program last year served 40 young women, and our STEMINA program had 30. And this year, we're aiming to have 50 women in our STEMINA program. And then we're going to have hopefully, hopefully probably about 100 women in the Girls STEM program. Um, so that's super exciting for me. And yes, we do have a wait list for the programs that, um, that we run currently. And the reason why we have wait list and we love to uh, bring everyone is because we need to have the capacity to be able to, um, to provide these programs to the young women. Um, so uh, thank you, Dorcas, for your comment. Uh, in previous session, there was a participant who had requested caption. Oh, I am not sure how to answer this. Um, the confidence is really important. Uh, it is very true. In my high school, I, um, uh, I was the only girl in my year to go into physics. You know, this is such an important comment because something that we heard from young women in our programs that, you know, sometimes I, I, I'm asked this question, why should, why are you running a program that is just for girls? Why can you just include boys as well? And why don't you have something like a partnership with the school, for example, or a school board? And the reason why I stay away from that is because I hear a lot of young women that come into our program and say, my school is a STEM based school. Uh, which means that they have computer science and they have all this coding and other technology type of or science um, in engineering um, workshops and, and educational program. However, the girls uh, say a lot of the times, for the most part, I'm the only girl in the room and my my teacher is a man and everybody in the room is a man. And I feel that um, the you know, I don't feel comfortable when I'm there. I feel like I'm the only one and I can't speak up. Or if I am trying to say anything, I'm feel, I feel like I'm being silenced or I'm not good enough. And that imposter syndrome comes through and says, can I even ask this question? But being in a room full of girls where we're all encouraged to speak and we are provided with the, uh, with the, um, um, we are provided with, you know, that, that experience where we get to uh, share what we know, what we don't know, and confident enough to ask questions is something that, you know, makes me feel like I can actually go into this field. So that's very exciting. Um, I, if you have any more questions, thank you. Uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this uh, right, CIFA file. I reading in, in English, so I'm hoping that that's right, but thank you so much. Uh, do you also teach them about things like imposter syndrome? Yes, and how to manage that. And I currently focus on technical skills. For the most part, we are focusing on technical skills because this is where we find partners to work with. However, when it comes to uh, imposter syndrome, yes, we focus on that as well because, like I mentioned earlier, having that, um, um, having the confidence you know, it kind of minimizes the imposter syndrome. So we focus on that as well. Um, totally agree with you, Doina. Thank you so much. Um, 
Is it possible to give girls from Africa? For right now, we're only focused in Ontario uh, because it's just, again, we're working with partners and uh, it's uh, it makes it easier to have that face-to-face, -face, right? But hopefully, we're going to go around the world. I'm not sure exactly where we're going to go, but if we do great things, we'll be able to... Um, um, We'll be able to have, you know, to grow across the world. Um, I'm just hoping that we're not going to have those issues across the world and hopefully that we can minimize as much as possible. So the goal for her evolution is not to go across the world and create uh, programs for girl for her evolution is to make sure that we do not have the issue or not having enough women that are interested in focusing on, on STEM. So that's, that's what I like to see more of. That's my, my, my goal. Um, how are the classes conducted? Typically, right now is virtual because it's all, you know, with the pandemic, but typically we have our classes, our classes that are run inside a company and we are bringing the girls so that they can meet the people that are work in, in the, um, in the industry so they can learn from them per se. So thank you for that question. Thank you so much. And I, I think this underscores the importance that all of us on the call have to be good role models to younger girls and to talk yes. to them yes. about technology and science and, and really work on getting them interested in what we're all doing. There's a saying, you can be what you can see. So, and this is proof with her evolutions programs that because we have them involved and they get to work firsthand with the professionals, they become inspired and now they learn that there's an opportunity in this particular field. Yeah, yeah I think that's really important. Um, I, I mean, all of us, when we meet someone's daughter or, you know, to talk to them about what we do and how interesting yeah. it is, and give them some new ideas. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So yeah. I think that's great. Um, I, Sarita mentioned a, a book called Fighting Your Fierce on Imposter Syndrome. I think imposter syndrome is a big deal for all of us. And I think yes. I was invited to give a talk the other day and I said, oh, I couldn't, you know, and they were like, stop it. So I think we all feel it, right? Yes. Um, now, here's a good question from Alicia. How can we help to support your organization? If you live in, in Toronto or in Ontario, we'd love for you to come and volunteer. Um, if you are a company that is looking to provide support with funding and mentorship, and we're looking for that as well, if possible. Um, any, For the most part, sometimes we're looking for the young women to have mentors you know, because once they're done with our programs, we try to connect them with uh, someone in the field that they can continue the conversation with and help support them apply for post-secondary or get them started into their career and help them with their interview process. And I think that the more mentors they have, the more they get to reduce that imposter syndrome. So because it's, that's so predominant, it's not just in the young women that are in high school, but I think in, when you go later on in your career, even eight years after I started her evolution, I still feel sometimes like, I don't know if I'm, if I can do this, right? Like you mentioned, I'm asked to, to speak and I don't know if I can do it. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your organization and your work thank with you. us. Thank Very you for impressive. having me. Thank and you. a good reminder for everybody to work on being role models and get more integrated in the community and STEM programs. Yes. And it's really important. Yes, absolutely. So, so now Thank we've you. run out of time. Go. I have to point in the wrong direction. Go to the red button in the bottom of the screen. And uh, we're going to go on to the next talk. Thank you so much. Thank you. For sharing. And uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you.